Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the fill tool and the join tool and what makes them different. So both of these tools are used in edit mode. So let's go ahead and switch to our modeling workspace and select all of the vertices around this circle that we have. Now there is no face between these vertices, but we can add one in very quickly by hitting the F key, which is our fill tool. And it goes ahead and adds in a face that connects to all of those vertices. Now it does create an ingon here. And so maybe if you were wanting to not create an ingon, if we undo that, we could hit Alt F. What it allows us to do is make a bunch of triangular faces that fill in the area that we had selected. Now we also have a beautify option down here. And what this will do is it will just try to lay out the triangles in a bit of a nicer pattern. And you can see there's some slight changing over in this area general area if we uncheck that versus if we check it. Uh, I think that's just trying to kind of limit the amount of triangles it's making, but um, I'm not quite sure. I don't see any difference really in beauty, uh, but maybe this is just the circle. So you do have that beautify option there. Now we have a third fill option, and that is grid fill. So let's undo that. And in order to get grid fill, what we have to do is we have to go up to the face select here and scroll down till we find grid fill. Now when we click this, what it's going to do is it's going to try to create a grid of quads to fill in the selected area. And then you have some options so you can increase the span or you can say, hey, I want you to span uh, a little bit less. And so you can see that it's making less of a grid as things go on, a less dense grid the lower we go. And it's still trying to keep its quads as best as possible. Uh, and then you can change the offset, which will change the spin of those or of that grid. So we can increase this and then maybe check the spin back and, uh, you know, and just kind of play around with these settings. But this is the grid fill option. It's a very useful tool for retopology, especially if you're trying to keep the faces all quads. Grid fill is the way to go. All right, so now we have grid fill, and we also have a join tool as well. So to show this off and the difference between fill and join, let's go to the cube. All right, now with the cube object, what we can see is our entire cube is subdivided, and I've simply removed the top vertex up here. So if we switch in a face select, you'll see that this face is an ingon, and it has eight vertices uh, along its face, so three on each side for the corners and then four for the midpoints. So what I can do is let's go ahead and fill in an edge between these two vertices, which it does, and we'll join an edge between these two vertices. Now, what's the difference? So if we select the edge that we have joined together and we move this up along the z-axis, you can see that the faces move with it. However, you can also see that this edge exists here. And so while we filled in an edge and it's created and those vertices are connected via that edge, that edge does not connect to the face that it tried that we tried to cut through. So if you want a face to be cut through and to join up those vertices, don't fill it. Simply hit J to join them together and you will create uh, vertices through all the edges that you cut through as well as be able to manipulate the face from both angles now. All right, and that's the fill tool and the join tool. Just something that uh, comes in very handy as you do your mesh modeling. Just remember filling is great for connecting vertices and edges, but if you need to make two vertices cut through other mesh and be connected, you need to use that join tool. I'm Sir Pinkbeard and I will see you in the next video.